are back. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a magical start to your week. Today we're talking about a fussy little show, The Country Bear Jamboree. I'm going to show you how I got this look and tell you all about the bears. If you like this video while you're watching, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a magical makeup Monday again. Now off to the story. Hey guys, I'm so sorry. Um, there was one week where we actually didn't have a Magical Makeup Monday and that is because I was super, super sick for about like three and a half to four weeks. So sad that I wasn't able to get a Magical Makeup Monday up that week, but we're back and we're better than ever and I can't wait to tell you about today's story. Today, we are talking about a very special attraction that Magic Kingdom actually had first, Country Bear Jamboree. This show is cute and definitely an interesting attraction. Let's just say it definitely showed its age, if you know what I mean. If you have never seen the original show, I'll link a video of it down below. If you've not heard, Country Bear Jamboree is actually getting a revamp. I know. The show is currently closed right now, Magic Kingdom, but it will reopen with a brand new show, which is so exciting. And honestly, I just love that for the bears. Well, how did we get these goofy bears that we know and love today? Well, our story first begins back in the 1960s with the one and only Walt Disney. Walt was actually selected as the chairman of pageantry for the 1960 Winter Olympics held in Squaw Valley, California. Walt was amazed by the beauty of the venue and it actually gave him inspiration to design a Disney ski resort. So Walt wanted to build Disney's Mineral King Ski Resort inside Sequoia National Park. That's crazy, like he just wanted to make something in a park, like a national park, just you know, just some wall things. If anyone could do it, it's probably him. Honestly, I think it would be so fun to add like a different resort or a different kind of resort to like the Disney parks in general. I know we have so many amusement parks and there's like water parks, but I feel like a fun like winter ski type resort would be so much fun. Imagine a snow castle, like Elsa's like snow castle and like, you know, I don't know. I feel like the Imagineers could have so much fun with that idea. Imagineers, if you're watching, which you probably aren't, but if you are, just think about it. Disney Ski Resort, just like a winter park. I think it'd be fun. Anywho, the resort that Walt dreamed of was decked out with all sorts of entertainment and even include a whimsical musical featuring musical bears. Walt had one of his top Imagineers, Mark Davis, working on this project with him. Mark created some concept art that included the musical. One day, Walt came into Mark's office and looked at some concept art and had a hearty chuckle as to what he actually saw. This moment is called Walt's last laugh in Disney history. Now, when Walt left Mark's office, he did something kind of strange, something he wouldn't normally do. Walt said goodbye to Mark. Now, little did Mark know that that is actually the last time that Mark would ever see Walt alive. Walt ended up pitching the idea for the ski resort, but passed away before it ever came to fruition. Lucky for us, Imagineers Albertino and Mark Davis wanted to keep the musical alive. The Imagineers had actually originally thought that the country bear should be a bear band restaurant. I just say that five times, like bear band restaurant. Bear, bear. In my head, I'm kind of picturing like a hoop de doo type situation, you know? Um, I don't know how they would do it without like actual live performers, but it's an interesting thought. Fun fact, some of the bear's names are actually really funny. They were like Lil Lemonade Bear and like Brother Zeb and like there's an all sorts of brothers. They're really cute, but I'm kind of glad they changed their names. With a new eye on plants for a new park called Walt Disney World, the country bears would find their home in 
Florida. The Imagineers decided they need the help of another Imagineer, Exitensio, and a musical director to actually bring the show to life. They end up bringing on George Brunt to facilitate the music aspect of the musical. It always takes a team, you know? Now, Disney was already pretty well versed in the world of animatronics since bringing the attractions of Disneyland to life, so the actual assembling of the animatronics themselves was pretty simple for Disney at this point. With the larger team at hand, the Country Bears was brought to life on Magic Kingdom's opening day on October 1st, 1971. The attraction was originally sponsored by Pepsi Cola and Frito Lay. Now, when it opened, the theater could hold just about 350 people at a time, and the show was about 16 minutes long in total, which is actually a pretty decently long show, I think, for an opening day attraction. Now, let's introduce the absolute stars of the show the bears. Now, I'll be honest, I had no idea how many bears there are actually were throughout the show, like if you actually start going through and counting them, and that each one had like a name and a certain outfit that they could be identified by. Some of them had like a fun little backstory. It was really fun to learn about each of these bears, and I'm curious to see if they're brought into the next iteration and if there's any new bears and what their backstories will be. But let's kick it off with the master of ceremonies himself. Henry. You might recognize him since he is the dapper bear wearing a high collar, a bow tie, and a top hat. Fun fact, Henry's backstory actually leads us to believe that he was actually a footballer who found music and it changed his whole life. Very high school musical if you ask me. Was he the original Troy Bolton? Henry is voiced by Pete Renaday. Now we're introducing my personal faves of the show. Melvin, Buff, and Max, aka those three goofy animal heads on the wall. Oh, love them. Melvin is a moose voiced by Bill Lee. Buff is a buffalo and the leader of the three also voiced by Thurl Ravenscroft. I'm so sorry if I get any of these names wrong. Let me know down below and I promise I'll make it up to you in another video when I see their names again. I'm so sorry. Last but not least, Max is a stag voiced by Pete Renaday. Quick side story about Melvin, our moose friend. From 1986 to 1991, Melvin was chosen as a host of a character breakfast over at Disney's Fort Wilderness. So you know where Pioneer Hall is where they have Hoop Dee Dee Review? Well, in the mornings there was a breakfast and you can meet Chip and Dale, but Melvin was the host of this breakfast. Melvin had a good run, but such an interesting choice as host. I do have to say, those talking heads, those little moosey heads, they crack me up every time. I don't know what it is about them, but I think it always just kind of takes me by surprise and it's just the funniest thing. I don't know, I can't explain it. Brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> Anywho, back to our main characters here. Next up we have Gomer, our piano playing loving bear. Gomer actually has quite the backstory. So Gomer originally loved playing classical music and he would practice for hours and hours to get it just right. He even went to New York to actually study classical music. Unfortunately, Gomer heard somebody call him the Lard of Juilliard, and that made him so sad that he ended up packing his bags and going home. He is absolutely loved by the other bears because he's the only bear that can play in a key other than C. That's so sad though about Gomer's backstory. Remember friends, words can hurt, even bears. My goodness, oh my gosh. Next up, we have everyone's favorite country western band. This band can consists of Zeke, Zeb, Ted, Fred, and Tennessee. Why Tennessee got a long name? Now Zeke plays the banjo and he is actually the leader of the group. And yes, if you look closely, Zeke's banjo is made out of a frying pan and a chicken bone. Not sure how the Imagineers came up with that one, but it was a choice. <laughs> I do like it, I think it's cute. 
gives a character, I guess. Zeke wears a collar, a hat, and some spectacles. Now Zeb plays the fiddle, and he wears a miner's hat and a polka dot bandana. I feel like I could picture that bandana like pretty vividly in my mind, you know? Good old Ted plays the corn jug and a washboard can be seen at his feet too, so we're led to believe he can play that as well. He wears a tall hat and a white shirt. Fred plays the mouth harp, AKA a harmonica. Oh, the Imagineers are silly. Gotta love it though, so much imagination. Fun fact, he learned how to play the harmonica from his dad. He wears blue jeans, some snazzy suspenders, and a red and white striped tie. Last but not least, we have good old Tennessee, and he plays a guitar with one whole string. It conveniently sits on a bathroom plunger and it has some symbols on the side. I mean, if you really watch this show and you look at the detail, it's truly incredible and just so funny to me. Like the smallest details, like one string guitar with like, you know, on a top of bathroom plunger. Like that's just hilarious. I, I get why Walt laughed. I really do because I, I think this is so funny. Now there is I guess what you could call like one honorary member of the band and that's actually Zeb's son, Baby Oscar. So he doesn't actually like sing or play any instruments but he does squeak three times. <laughs> he squeezes his little teddy bear three times throughout the show and that's his contribution. A little Baby Oscar, let's give it up for Baby Oscar guys. Next up we have Wendell who actually plays the man Lynn. He wears a bowler hat and a blue bandana. He is also known for quite his feisty attitude and is voiced by Bill Cole. Next, we have Liver Lips McGraw. Liver Lips. Now, poor Liver Lips. He's quite the homebody, but he's never actually home because he's always out on a show. He's pretty popular. It gets crazier with our boy Liver Lips here. Did you know Liver Lips is actually famous? That's right, famous in nightclubs and the circus. I mean, you go Liver Lips, you go. <laughs> But of course, while he's playing at all these fancy nightclubs, his heart is always at home because he's a homebody, of course. Now we have Trixie Bear. Now Trixie, she only comes out and has like one song that she actually performs and that's it. She doesn't even come out for the grand finale or anything because Miss Trixie, she is just too busy. Miss Trixie is writing her own book. So her focus really isn't on show performance anymore. It's more on the book side of life. So Trixie girl comes out out, we see her once and then she goes to write her book. Next up we have good old Terrence who plays the ukulele and is voiced by Van Stoneman. Not much of a backstory for him so we're just gonna move on to the triplets. You know the triplets. They're the Sunbonnet Trio which consists of Bunny, Bubbles and Balua. I'm so sorry Balua if I say that wrong, but I think it's Balua. The triplets are pretty iconically known with their bright blue outfits and their little bonnets. Now, the triplets are the babies of the Jamboree and in their spare time, they like to knit and they're currently knitting a scarf for Big Al. The scarf won't be done for three Christmases from now though. So they've got a lot to work on, I would say. But so sweet of them. Now we have Ernest the Dude. He plays the fiddle and again, he only comes out for one song and he also doesn't come out for the grand finale either. He has a signature lilac polka dot bow. Now on to Teddy Barra. Oh, Teddy. Teddy is like the crush of the show and it's very evident by the various cat calls and whistles that are heard from the other. She is the bear that descends from the ceiling, decked out in feathers. She has a feathered swing and a feathered boa that she comes out in. It's a whole thing and quite the spectacle. She is absolutely fabulous. She doesn't play any instruments, but she does 
sing. Now one could argue that she is the star of the show, or one could argue that Big Al is the star of the show. Now Big Al plays a guitar and he wears a red vest and a top hat, and he is voiced by Tex Ritter. One non-bear friend that we haven't mentioned yet is actually Henry's raccoon friend, and he is voiced also by Bill Cole. Now, I don't know why, but I, for the life of me, just don't remember there being this many characters in the show. But I mean, the grand finale, there is a ton that come out. So I guess it does make sense. Who is your favorite bear? Let me know down below. Obviously mine actually aren't the bears. They're the three animals like Melvin, Buff, and Max. Love them. They're so cute and so funny. So the country bear Jamboree has made appearances in Disneyland and Tokyo Disneyland and even had a holiday overlay at one point. Could you imagine the bears and like their cute little holiday outfits and some fun new like holiday songs? I don't know. I think it's so cute. Fun fact, this was actually the first attraction to get a holiday overlay and that paved the way for so many more attractions to get holiday overlays. I'm honestly so thankful that they started with the bears and I feel like it's such an easy fix for the Imagineers to do during the holidays. So I don't know. I'm a big fan of holiday overlays. Do you guys like them? I kind of wish they would do it more, like more seasons, not just like Halloween and Christmas. I kind of hope they do like a Valentine's Day one. I just think it'd be so cute. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm even more excited for this new show to be released. Like I honestly just like cannot wait. From what I hear, The Bare Necessities is going to be a song that's played in the new show. And honestly, amazing, amazing. I'm so, so excited for that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for getting ready with me this morning and learning all about the country bears. I had so much fun and now I'm so excited for this new show. Anyways, this is the final look of today. If you enjoyed this video while you're watching, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a magical makeup Monday again. Until next time, friends, I hope you guys have a magical week and I will see you all next time. Bye!